and that is looking good. And so let's jump into this and we'll wrap it up here with the Iowa State project. Okay, so just a quick thing about Iowa State, we're located in Ames, Iowa. We have around 32,000 students, give or take. And uh, we are a land grant institution here in the state of Iowa. Our, our project team uh, included myself as the project administrator. Uh, we have our assessment librarian, Linda Anderson, who's now retired. So this wasn't the project that pushed her over the edge, but she is off enjoying retirement now, but she, got, she helped us get started. Uh, Katie Wampole, uh, we uh, work here with Iowa State with, uh, with uh, assessment consultant, Martha Kilverdu. And so she advised us on our project. Uh, we had great support from our library leadership team, including our Dean, Hillary Sale. And uh, so of course the ARL support team, Sue, Margaret, Kevin, and Kevin all did a great job supporting our project. Our project was focused on uh, our use here of Iowa State of the ACRL project outcome tool set. And so uh, we see the ACRL toolkit as being a really simple to use product. And so we wanted to understand better, can that kind of a tool be used in a meaningful and actionable way in a library. And another overarching goal of our project was just to produce more awareness of the ACRL Project Outcome Survey Toolkit, which was really just emerging for academic libraries about the same time that the ARL request for proposals came back, back in the 2017, 2018 timeframe. So if you, uh, I think many of you are probably familiar with Project Outcome, but it has a set of uh, simple to use survey templates across seven different domains. In our case, we were focusing in on the space domain uh, related to study rooms in the Iowa State University Library. Uh, a project outcome survey has, they all have the same basic components. They ask uh, questions related to outcomes related to a student's knowledge, confidence, any kind of behavior change and awareness they have about library resources. And then they have a couple open-ended questions at the end asking uh, what did they like most about a particular service and what can a library do to improve that kind of a service. Uh, we thought this matters because we know that libraries collect a lot of quantitative data about their programs and services, but a lot of times they're not really focusing on outcomes uh, related to the services that they provide. And that is what project outcome is sort of geared towards. And we felt that measuring outcomes can provide libraries with new ways to demonstrate benefits of library spaces beyond just gate counts and other usage metrics. So uh, objectives of our project were, uh, we wanted to again, explore what kind of outcome trends and findings we can observe over the course of the project timeline, which for us, we started using project outcome surveys. I think they go back into the 2018, 2019 timeframe. And we did uh, surveys regularly throughout the course of the project up into uh, last fall. So we've included all that data into our RLIF uh, project data set. And we wanted to share information with other ARL libraries about our project and hopefully to maybe encourage them to also use project outcome surveys. Uh, we can load that data into the project outcome database. And once we do that, we can compare ourselves with other ARL, ARL libraries and see how we're doing against the project outcome benchmarks. So our process was that uh, each semester we do a set of project outcome surveys. We do one related to library study rooms. Uh, we are using Qualtrics here for our project. Uh, project outcome does have a built-in survey tool, but uh, by using Qualtrics, we had some advantages here. We could send our survey to uh, identified email list of respondents and then send automatic reminders just to the ones that hadn't completed the survey. Uh, there were some other features of Qualtrics that we like, uh, not to say that the project outcome surveys couldn't be used successfully. We just chose to use Qualtrics for our project. Um, so we collected the data each semester uh, we put that into a data set, and then at the end of our project, we were able to analyze the data, looking at any kinds of trends that emerged over the course of our project, and just you know seeing what kind of feedback we got 
related to our study room here at the Iowa State University Library. So the project outcome data was pretty simple. Uh, it was just basically, we were able to look at some key performance indicators related to trends and average scores. And also uh, we were able to look at response rate. And uh, thanks to funding from the ARL project, we were able to offer an incentive to some of our surveys. And we were able to collect some information about response rates related to the surveys that we did uh, with incentives compared to surveys that we did without incentives. And, uh, and not to be, I'm sure it's not a surprise to anyone that we did find an increased response rate on the surveys that we ran when we were offering an incentive for uh, participants to complete the survey. Just a quick old, couple of charts. So here's a screenshot of the project outcome data dashboard. So if you go to the extent of loading your data into the project outcome database, it will generate uh, reports for you showing not only your own results, but also giving you data about other comparison groups. In this screenshot, you'll see at the top, it says doctoral universities. So uh, in this case, I can compare myself to other uh, libraries like mine. Uh, who knows, maybe someday we can add a group into Project Outcome that would be related to ARL libraries and see how the data compares across our group. Uh, I don't have a lot of charts here in the, in the data in the slideshow, but here's just an example of some of the data that we produce. Again, pretty simple. This is just showing across the different project outcome outcomes, uh, what our mean scores were. This is on a scale of five. So five would be the maximum. You can see that our scores are you know, well above four. So our respondents you know, were pretty positive when it came to uh, how they responded to the project outcome questions, which is a good thing. It was good to see that uh, there were some good outcomes coming from the use of study rooms in the Iowa State Library. We were also able to disaggregate the data in different ways. We were able to match up our data set with things like student gender, their student type in terms of undergraduate, graduate, are they freshmen, sophomores, et cetera? What college do they belong to? We also could look at pre-COVID versus post-COVID. Okay, you may not say that we're in post-COVID yet, but I think you know what I mean there. And then also we could look at the incentives that we offered and see what the response rates might look like, or and even and also the responses compared to the results we got back from those incentive versus non-incentive sur surveys. Uh, so here's another example of a chart. This one is showing the data desegregated by class rank. So I know that the chart is small, you can't read it. It's just mainly to show the artifact that we have this kind of data available to us to take a look at as we look at our project outcome data. Here's a bar chart showing uh, some data related to our response rates. And you can see on the left, those are the response rates when we had an incentive. And on the uh, right side, those are the response rates when we did not offer the incentive. So you can see we got a pretty good boost in our responses when we did offer an incentive to do the survey. Okay, so uh, we found that there was value to doing project outcome surveys. We actually were able to use data from our project outcome surveys to build a case for getting uh, additional study rooms into the university, into the Iowa State Library. Here's an example of some uh, pictures of some of the new study rooms we built based on information. This was early on, uh, based on data we collected early in the process back in 2019, 2020 but we were able to add some additional study rooms based in part on information we got back from the project outcome work. We had some limitations. Our uh, data is uh, based on a convenience sample. So it's just based on students that reserve a study room. Um, and we only collect the data at the midpoint of the semester. So a student that may have used the room early in the semester may not remember much about their experience. Uh, we probably would like to get our surveys done more closely to when the student actually uses the room. Uh, the project outcome work is really pretty simple. You can use the ACRL project outcome toolkit to get started. It's all free. Uh, we use Qualtrics, but you don't need to. You can use the surveys built into the toolkit. And the time to do this was pretty minimal. Uh, I would estimate less than 10 hours a semester to set up and run the project outcome surveys. Uh, for future work, uh, we want to uh, continue to incorporate our project outcome work into our annual system report. 
Um, we're going to work to automate the survey process to make it closer to when the student actually uses the room. And right now we can see a student that reserves the room, but we don't really know how many of their friends and colleagues join them. So we may uh, modify our reservation process to get more information about how many students are actually using our rooms. Okay, so uh, that wraps up my presentation on our use of project outcomes. I know. We're